tree. And um, yeah, this is like, I mean, for the, like, okay, let me start with this. Who in here works like in data science as their regular job or are studying data science? And then who doesn't have any data science like experience at all? We got one. Okay, cool. Oh, two, three, cool, all right. Okay, now we're getting all the hands. All right, sweet. Well, this is like a super, super basic like introduction to machine learning. Introduction: uh, What is machine learning? Uh, machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence that focuses on developing algorithms and models that enable computers to learn from data and make predictions and decisions without any kind of like explicit programming. So, I mean, that's really just like the main gist of machine learning. Um, I've put in here like some advantages of machine learning and some like applications. Uh, the ability to handle large and complex data sets, automation of tasks, discovery of hidden patterns and insights in data. And uh, here's some applications. It pretty much runs across all spectrums. Um, I, I think we're seeing too with like the rise of uh, AI as a whole, like this whole application of data science is getting pushed to new limits and to new areas. So. Uh, I just put a couple in here, of course, finance, that's kind of like what we're focused on most with Numerai, uh, but we're also seeing machine learning and AI and healthcare, marketing, cybersecurity, autonomous systems, and it's used for a lot of different tasks such as fraud detection and like finance, uh, also analysis like what we do, uh, fraud detection recommendation systems, image recognition, natural language processing, and autonomous driving. A lot of data science goes into those, those Tesla machines. Uh oh, I'm back to the snow here. Okay, so here's a quick uh, history of machine learning. Um, it can actually be traced all the way back to the 50s, uh, going back where it's definitely evolved a lot since, since then, including uh, rules based expert systems, statistical modeling, neural networks, and deep learning uh, over the last you know, 60, 70 years. Uh, so some of the mild, major milestones were was the development of decision tree algorithms, the birth of neural networks, uh, the invention of support vector machines, and the breakthroughs in deep learning. Uh, which you know, if you're in the field of machine learning, I mean, you know a lot of the new crazy advanced things that have come out over the last even just ten years. Um, so I mean, it's kind of a repeat of before, but you know, machine learning does impact a lot of different fields. Um, so I will skip that. Um, who has zero coding experience? Anybody like not work with code at all for anything? Yeah, two. Okay, cool. So um, I I work with Python. Uh, you know, with like Numerai. You know, it's not specific to working with Python. Uh, I know there's like a subset of people that use R and uh, uh, you know other ways of working through their models, but um, I just focused on some of like the most commonly used uh, libraries uh, for Python for machine learning. So uh, it starts pretty simple here with like NumPy and, and Pandas. Um, NumPy is like really just a uh, fundamental package for scientific computing. Um, you know, you can get your arrays, like all your mathematical stuff will come from there. And with Pandas, it's a library for data manipulation and analysis. So a lot of times that's what we use to actually analyze these like really large data sets that are being sent out from the Numerai team. Um, you know, putting those into data frames, looking at them in series and, you know, like handling <coughs> data as in uh, a little bit of statistical operations involved with that. And then these last three here, which one's the point of the middle one? Uh, these like last three here, 
Uh, these are just three of many different libraries that you can use for, you know, once you start getting into the actual machine learning aspects of things, um, scikit-learn, uh, TensorFlow, Keras, there's like a lot of different uh, ways that you can kind of approach going with your machine learning models and it's like pretty much endless possibilities of how you work with the data and what you choose to use and different libraries and different applications have different um, approaches of like handling data. So this is like the part where it gets fun and this is why, you know, Numerize uh, competition is one of the hardest in the world because I mean, finance and just the amount of data that you have to work through, uh, yeah, it can get pretty complicated. Um, here's some use cases in finance. Um, one of them is predictive modeling, which is widely used uh, in finance. It enables financial institutions to forecast trends, assess risk, and make investment decisions. I just threw that in there because that's essentially like what we're doing to help memorize a hedge fund, uh, as well as like market analysis, identifying patterns, and predicting price movements. Um, Numerai actually has two different competitions, uh, which we'll get into in a little bit. Uh, one of them is like a bring your own data approach where you're actually, if you have like quant experience working for a hedge fund and you actually want to bring in your own data and, and give uh, predictions based on stocks that are known, you can actually do those through signals, but the class, what they call the classic numerai tournament, it's all obfuscated data. So some of this stuff in finance, like you're actually not gonna know what the features are that you're trying to predict. Uh, so it becomes a different type of problem. But you're, th that's the problem you're trying to solve. It's just you don't know what the features are that you're working with. Um, here's some different examples of like what supervised learning and unsupervised learning is. Uh, the supervised learning part of it is uh, involving a training of a model on labeled data where the inputs are paired with their corresponding outputs. And then, of course, unsupervised learning involves training the model on unlabeled data where the inputs have no corresponding outputs. So like that type of unsupervised learning, the model learns to find patterns, relationships, or clusters in the data without explicit guidance. Um, some examples of supervised learning include image classification, uh, spam email detection, housing price data, based on historical data, so you know it actually has the labels, you know what you're working with. Uh, examples of unsupervised learning include uh, clustering similar documents together, identifying customer se segments based on purchase behavior, anomaly detection, like a lot of the stuff that you won't have those like specific lab labels that you're working with. Um, so once you kind of get like that general like aspect of what you're working with and what you're trying to build, uh, then you actually start getting into the data itself. So one of the first things that you always want to do whenever you get any kind of data set is you want to look at it and then also if you need to clean it, transform it, and scale it if needed. So here's a, a couple of definitions here of cleaning data, which involves hand, uh, handling missing values removing outliers and dealing with uh, in inconsistencies. So one of the first things you do before you even write your program is you're actually gonna wanna look fully at the data set, break it all down into pieces, and know exactly what you're working with. Uh, transformation involves converting or modifying the raw data to fit the requirements of the algorithms. Um, you know, that one's a little bit harder to explain, but um, depending on which algorithms you choose, sometimes they have specific requirements that have to be met before you can actually run those types of models. So sometimes you have to take the data and transform that data and convert it into something that the algorithm knows how to work with. And then scaling involves bringing different uh, features or variables to a similar scale to prevent one feature from dominating the learning process. Um, and this is actually pretty big for the Numerai tournament because we work with so many uh, different features and a lot of them, uh, you know, some of them could be more volatile, like you sometimes you need to like scale, uh, do some data scaling and, um, you know, make sure that one feature isn't dominating the other, the other features. 
Um, now we're kind of getting more into the uh, machine learning aspect of it. Here's like a couple of different examples of like some simple, um, uh, I guess you could say like simple ways that the different algorithms work with data. Uh, first one's regression, which is a machine learning technique that's used to predict a continuous outcome variable based on one or more input features. Um, so some of the examples of uh, regression algorithms include linear regression, which is just simple line uh, polynomial regression and decision tree regression. I actually posted, uh, this is from the Scikit-Learn uh, website. Um, this is just a simple like graphic representation depending on your max depth inputs, like how it handles working with uh, a data set on um, under some simple data. Then you have classification, which is a machine learning technique that's used to predict categorical outcomes. Um, and then you got clustering, which is a machine learning technique used to group similar data points together using their similarity. Um, who's confused? I'm already confused. Um, it, it's a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to keep this like as simple as possible, but I think like really the main point is to know that there's really like millions of different ways that you can like work with data. So I guess until really you can kind of like sit down and actually work with like how to actually analyze the data first and know exactly what you're looking at, uh, then you can kind of start to play around with like how you want to manipulate that data and run that data. Anyone have questions at all? Um, I added this little section in here, like you might not see this section in like an intro to data science uh, class normally, but I added this in here because this is like really big, uh, just for the Numerai um, tournament itself. Um, the feature selection aims to identify the most relevant and informative features for a machine learning task. Sometimes you have features that can help a lot, but then also there's times where different features, if you like include them within your algorithm itself, if you don't uh, neutralize that down or even just totally cut that out of your data, it can actually hurt your model. Um, so the importance of feature selection is actually helping to improve your model's performance. Um, so there is like a couple of different techniques for feature selection. Some of them are more simple. Some of them are actually like included in those algorithms. And then some of them you can actually like add on top of what you're already working with to sort of give you a little bit of an extra uh, push in the right direction. So there's uh, different like filter methods, wrapper methods, and then embedded methods. So some of them are like like just using simple statistical measures of all the different features. Uh, they also have cross validation or like model performance that you can run uh, with different parameters to figure out what the best subset of features will be before you actually run your predictions. Um, so feature selection can be evaluated based on a lot of different criteria. Um, you have like model performance metrics and then uh, computational efficiency, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's just something you're gonna have to like look into a bit. Um, does anybody, okay, who, who is working in the, already putting in models in? You, are you doing, who's, who's doing feature neutralization here? Anybody? Okay, we got two, three, okay, cool. Um, once I go into the next presentation, there's actually like some pretty good resources for uh, neutralization, so definitely maybe hop in there and take a look at that. Um, so pretty much after everything's all done, um, you, you do have like this model evaluation that you can do. There's definitely a lot of different metrics that you can use uh, depending on what kind of data you're working with. Um, you're able to actually kind of get the, the metrics based on the model's output itself to um, pretty much measure how well the model should do <laughs> on live data. Um, you also have cross-validation and overfitting, which is what you're going to hear a lot if you're getting into data science is uh, what occurs when a model learns that the training data too well and it actually ends up performing poorly on new data. 
Um, a lot of times, it's this happens when the model becomes too com complex and it starts to capture like noise or irrelevant patterns in the data sets. And of course, when it actually comes to running those evaluations and coming up with those predictions, it can actually overshoot the mark or undershoot the mark depending on uh, what's going on. Um, so here's some challenges that can come up. Uh, you have data quality issues. Uh, fortunately for us, at least on the Numeri Classic tournament, uh, we don't really have to deal with like data quality issues because the data is pretty much already cleaned and set up for you. So they make it a little bit easy on that end. Uh, even if you're like, I think if Numeri is missing values, like say a data provider that they have you know, for some reason, one day they don't send the data, like Numeri actually fill in those uh, gaps for you, if I think. Do they, what do they put in a 0.5 or something in there? That'd be cool. Yeah. You'll see that it's ranked, like when you do your predictions, it's ranked zero to, <coughs> zero to one. So Numeri will actually go in and actually automatically put 0.5s in there just so that you don't run into problems on your models. Uh, you have also a bias in machine learning uh, with systemic errors and um, yeah, uh, there's, def there's definitely a lot of like challenges, you know, especially like if you're going to run, play around the signals tournament, um, for those people that don't have the money possibly to like buy their own data. I know back when things first started, like a lot of people were using like the Yahoo Finance API, which was like depreciated like a thousand years ago. And, uh, you know, once people were downloading like really big data sets off of that, they were finding like negative numbers, which shouldn't happen in, in stock markets, uh, missing values, like all sorts of crazy stuff. So that's really when you're gonna run into the most issues. Um, and then I just kind of threw this in here, some emerging trends. Um, you know, I talked about it earlier, some advances in deep learning, uh, natural language processing, Reinforcement learning, I mean, I think we're all seeing kind of like this new revolution of like AI as a whole coming into the picture in a lot of different use cases as well. And now we're actually having to get into these like ethical considerations as well when we're messing with this stuff. Um, so yeah, it's definitely an interesting uh, time period. And really your key takeaways here is that machine learning is definitely a powerful technology that allows computers to learn from data and make predictions. Uh, so it you know, definitely has a lot of uh, you know, use cases and um, it's definitely very important for uh, revolutionizing the way that we live. And uh, I think that's it. Is that it for this one? That's it, it's not going anymore. There we go. So um, for like the slides where you're talking about like the different, I guess, uh, strategies, machine learning strategies for the tournament, uh, what have you personally found like the most successful? Um, yeah, I mean for me, I don't, I like, when I first joined the tournament, I had zero data science experience. Um, I actually, at the time, was working in healthcare uh, as a field engineer for a laboratory instrumentation company. And I was doing like my finance degree while I was working and like I was already married, had kids, had a house and I was doing like school part time. And um, you know, I had gotten like a scholarship to take the CFA and I was like getting like ready to go work for a, a bank or a hedge fund or whatnot and I was like right when COVID hit. Um, at the beginning of 2020, I actually got this scholarship and I was supposed to graduate at the end of 2019 but they pushed me to 2020 and because of COVID I actually like they didn't get a graduate on stage, like they did it virtual, like all that stuff and all the testing centers got shut down and then I found Numeri. So like at the time I had zero experience. So I think for me like initially I just started really simple. Like I just went to Psychic Learn and I was like, oh let me just check out some of the algorithms we got there. And also in the next slideshow they you know Numeri does have example models and I kinda like what I did was I think at the time was it always like GBM that they used back in the day? Or yeah, no? XG, XG was, yeah. Oh, was it XG Boost was the original one, right? They might have, and then they switched it over. Yeah, so they, yeah, I think it's sometimes, like, I think what I ended up doing was, I'm like, oh, this, like, I don't want to do 
because you want to be different than everybody else. Like that's kind of the point of the tournament of getting like true contribution. It's like being different than everybody else, but also still getting good data. So I just kind of copied and pasted that out. I'm like, okay, what's XG boost? I like looked into that, and then I'm like, okay, what are some alternates to XG boost? And then that kind of took me like down different rabbit holes. So I kind of just kept jumping into all the different rabbit holes of all the different libraries and testing stuff uh, a bit. So yeah, I just kind of just played around. Anybody else? Any other questions? How long did I go? I think I wasn't even keeping track. 